Did I ever tell you how the beast first came to live in Doily Wood? The poor fellow didn't look like that then. I remember that day so well. Good morning, Arthur, trilled Mavis Cruet, the fairy. <coughs> ah, said Arthur. Arthur, said Mavis, can you hear some lovely bells ringing far, far away? There they go again. Ah, you, Mavis Cruet, have got a bad attack of the old dreaded uh, ringing in the ears. But I heard it so distinctly, it went dum dum de dum 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 de dum And then, asked Arthur, did it go tum tum de dum tum de dum tum de dum Yes, why, you did hear it. Uh-huh. I didn't hear nothing. And what you heard was all inside your pretty little head, me lovely. Wedding bells, they was. Brought about by a desire in the part of the brain we caterpillars term as the subconscious. A desire to participate in matrimony. In other words, to get wed. Gosh, said Mavis. There is only one known cure for this complaint. A wedding. And for that we shall need a bridegroom. I don't know any, faltered Mavis. No problem. We wait for the very next bloke to come along. You give a wave of the old wand and abracadabra, one bridegroom. What I'd really like, sighed Mavis, is a handsome prince to ride in and whisk me away. Now, it just so happened, by a fantastic coincidence, that riding into the woods at that very moment came Prince Humbert the Handsome. Oh, one is having fun, and bicycling is so very good for one, too. But unfortunately, he was to run into... Evil Edna. A witch of extreme wickedness. Now who, cried the prince, has left a rotten old television receiver lying around? That's really dangerous. And what a rotten program. I'll rotten program him. And with that, she cast the wickedest spell of her evil career. She changed that poor prince into the beast. Meanwhile, Mavis and Arthur were still looking for a bridegroom. Stand by with the old wand, Maeve. I think someone's coming. Oh, Arthur, perhaps he'll be a handsome prince. Now! Why am I wearing a grey topper? Because you are going to be a bridegroom, me lucky lad. No, no, no. I could never, never marry him. I know he's no oil painting, Maeve, said Arthur. But it's an honest face. I quite like his looks, Arthur, but I could never, never marry a beast who cannot pronounce his R's. Fairies really are ridiculous creatures. <laughs> Strange creatures often visit Doily Woods, and none was stranger than the creature Arthur met one day. Oh, wow! Good morning, friend. You almost made me jump out of my skin, gasped Arthur. Ah, said the creature. It is quite usual for the caterpillar or larva of the species Lepidoptera, bits, moths and butterflies, to shed their skins. Fancy that! No one has ever told me. Not everyone knows, but I do. It's all in here. All in your tum? queried Arthur. Now, I'm only a mere caterpillar, mate, but I do know that your think box is hupsters. Ah, yes, in mere caterpillars, that is so. 
but I am a bookworm. Now, bookworms eat up facts from books. Consequently, our source of knowledge is our stomachs. Allow me to demonstrate. Um, delicious. Ah, now let me see. Ah, yes. Did you know that the sixth wife of King Henry VIII was called Catherine Parr? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, said Arthur, keeping his fingers crossed. Everyone knows that. And his seventh wife was called Betty. You are an ignoramus. Oh, thank you, said Arthur. I say, said the bookworm, why not join me for breakfast? Chapter three looks quite tasty. Well, tart anyway, but I always eat leaves. Plenty of leaves here. <laughs> tart very much for breakfast, said Arthur. But as he walked back through the wood, he was feeling quite different. He felt all clever and knowledgeable. He discovered Mavis Cruet looking down a hole. Mavis? Did you know that should that owl be deep enough to go right through the earth, it would finish up in Australia? Gosh, said Mavis. Then up popped a bunny. Excuse me, bunny, cried Mavis. But are you from Australia? Sure, Spot, said the rabbit. From a little place called Watership Down Under. Not necessarily true, said Arthur. Rabbits are well known for their mendacity. Their what? queried Mavis. It means they're all fibbers said Arthur. Tell me, Arthur, said Mavis, why have you suddenly become so clever and use such long words? I owe it all to my new friend, the bookworm, and his book. It's made me what I am. It's made you ever so boring, said Mavis, but under her breath. I must meet him. <laughs> Hello, said the bookworm. Who are you? I'm Mavis Cruet. I'm a fairy. A fairy? There's no such thing. It says so here. You, madam, are an hallucination. Oh, you poor short-sighted little grub, you, cried Mavis. It's probably all the fault of your diet. You should eat lots and lots of lovely green stuff. I am a fairy, and just to prove it, I'm going to change that musty old book into a lovely, tasty cabbage. <coughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. Now tell me, bookworm, asked Mavis, what is twice two? Um, 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 uh, uh, five? asked the bookworm. You're cured, said Mavis. This story is about the Moog, a simple soul, the Moog. That day, he was going nowhere in particular, which is where he went quite often, when it happened. And then again. It was obvious, even to the Moog, that he must do something about it, so he did. Oh, that was much better. No, it wasn't. Then who should come up but Mavis Cruitt? the fairy, followed by the caterpillar called Arthur. Here, what's bitten the old Moog? He's just having a little scratch, Arthur, said Mavis. I expect he's got a little tickle. You've got a little tickle, haven't you, Moogie dear? Perhaps he's got a... A flea? <gasps> Shh! Arthur! What's wrong with having an old flea? Well, nice people never have a... You know what? So we don't talk of such things. Oh, I see. So the old Moog here has got a you-know-what. Hey, Moog, have you got a you-know-what? No, Arthur, I've got a flea. Oh, the disgrace. Then who should come along but Carwash the cat? Tell me, said Carwash, do I see the Moog uh, jiving? Or is he uh, 
be dropping. My eyes are not first class, you know. Perhaps this animal intends to star in some discotheque. The Moog is not dancing, Car Wash. He has a... Oh, how very irritating for the poor fellow. Perhaps the you-know-what will get giddy and fall off. If I do, I'll hop on to one of you lot. Hey, I never knew the old Moog was so clever. He said that without moving his lips. Moog, say bottle of beer. Bottle of beer. His lips did move, Arthur. I think I'll hop onto the caterpillar first. He looks nice and tasty. That was not the voice of the Moog. That was the voice of the parasite on the Moog's back. Oh, well, I think it's a flea, and I wish he'd hop it. And have me for afters. No, you keep it, Moog, mate. Try to think of it as your own little pet. Well, the poor Moog would have had his little pet forever if it hadn't been for Mavis Cruet. I am going to magic the you-know-what and make him vanish. Now, vanishing is what people do before Mavis waves her wand. <laughs> her magic nearly always goes wrong. Now, Mr. You-know-what, vanish! <laughs> oh, crumbs! I've made him grow bigger! Mr. You-know-what, come back! For the next few days, that giant flea terrorised everyone. Well, one bite from him, mate, and you'd lose an arm. Quick, everyone, run! Ha-ha! Well, once again, that little Mavis Cruet saved the day. Fear not, Arthur. I shall wave my little magic wand and turn that horrid you-know-what into something. That would be nice. Now, what shall I turn him into? I know. <laughs> I turned him into a vegetarian, said Mavis. It all started one night when I was being particularly bright. I was just starting my dance through the forest when... Get off! Off it! Shoo! Uh, just moths, Willow, said Mavis Cruet. Moths who find your light terribly attractive. They're just moths, Willow. Just moths? Just moths? Snapped the caterpillar, Arthur. I'll have you know that moths is one of nature's great triumphs, the ultimate in modern design, the concord of the insect world. Besides, some of my best friends is moths, not to mention relatives. <whistles> Cooey, Uncle Harold, it's me, Arthur. <whistles> Cooey, Auntie Hilda, be with you all soon. Well, he goes on in that tiresome manner until eventually I switch off my light and the moths fly off. But the next day... Good morning, Arthur, called the Moog. Arthur said... What did he say? He said he couldn't speak as his mouth was full of nails, said Car Wash. Gracious me, gasped Mavis. Whatever are you building, Arthur? It's me chrysalis said Arthur. I'm making me chrysalis. Very shortly I shall creep into this penthouse, have a bit of a ziz, and wake up a moth. Then a couple of flaps on the old wings, and up and away into the bright blue yonder. Gosh, said the Moog, that is very clever. I find it rather sad. Well, soon after that, Arthur crept into his chrysalis and went to sleep. Cooey, Arthur, called Mavis. Are you a moth yet? No, not yet. They did this every day. Cooey, Arthur, are you a moth yet? No, not yet. 
and after a week or so, they thought perhaps he sounded a little cross. No, I'm not. Then one day, who should rush up but a snail? Uh, a parcel for a caterpillar called Arthur, he panted. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you, gasped the snail, and was gone in a flash. Well, the very next day... Cooey, Arthur, are you a moth yet? <gasps> Gosh! How do I look, folks? Now stand by for takeoff. <laughs> oh, that's odd. Let's try again. Most odd. Slight technical hitch, folks. Then in came the witch, Evil Edna. Hey! She said. What's that stupid caterpillar doing up there wearing a funny hat? Arthur has changed into a lovely moth, cooed Mavis. And he's just about to fly for the very first time. Rubbish, snapped Edna. It's just a caterpillar wearing a funny hat. And if it wants to fly, now's its chance. Then she cast one of her evil spells. <laughs> He's wrecked that moth suit, cried the snail. And it's not even his. Not his, cried Mavis. Definitely not. He hired those clothes from us, Moth Bros. Oh, poor Arthur. He's turned into a hired clothes moth said Mavis. One lovely afternoon in Doily Woods, Arthur the Caterpillar was nicely curled up having his little nap when he was aroused by tripping fairy footsteps. It was Mavis Cruet in a hurry. Hello, Arthur, trilled the fairy. <laughs> said Arthur. Can't stop for a chat. Am late for an appointment. Must fly. Bye. You fly. Now there's a laugh. You, Mavis Cruet, are the only non-flying fairy in the world. Are you trying to tell me, Arthur, that every other single fairy can, can fly? They flitter happily about like thistledown on lovely gossamer wings in the morning sun, said Arthur, all poetic. Gosh, it's just not fair. Flying's dead easy. You should see my dad. All you've got to do is flap those things you've got on your back and up you'll go. Up to now, Mavis had thought they were for keeping off the rain. Oh, Arthur, do you really think I could? Go on, have a little flap. All right, giggled Mavis. Not much cop as a flapper, are you, Maeve? You can do better than that. It's no good, Maeve. You must think big. Think jumbo jet. Ready for takeoff? Then chocks away. Now jump and flap. I think I know where we went wrong. One should always take off into the wind. Now. Hmm. We would seem to have a little technical problem. Not enough power to lift the fuselage. In other words, too much weight. Are you trying to tell me that I'm... that I'm... fat? Well, perhaps you are a trifle... obese. Oh, I thought for a moment that you were saying I was fat. Well, perhaps just a bit heavy for flight. Now, if you want to fly, girl, you've got to diet, cut out all those fairy cakes. Oh, said Mavis. Well, that poor little soul didn't eat a single fairy cake for a whole week. She became lighter, but was no longer the happy creature we knew and loved. I'm starving. Cheer up, Maeve, said Arthur. 
for today's takeoff day. So flap, flap, flap. Oh, very nice. How about some happy flittering? I'm much too hungry, Arthur. Higher and higher she went, little knowing she was on the brink of disaster. What's that up there? Snarled Evil Ed, another wicked witch. Why, it's that fat fairy flittering like Thistledown. I'll down her. Then she cast one of her evil spells. Gosh, a fairy cake tree. Oh, how could the poor dear resist such wicked temptation? She didn't, and became heavier and heavier. And then, oh horror, her wings gave way. Whoops! Fancy a fairy cake, said Mavis. Now, once a year, the small folk of Doily Wood prepare to go on holiday. Mavis Cruitt, the fairy, was doing just this. When up came the caterpillar, Arthur. Hello, Mavis, said Arthur. Keep him well? No, I can see you're not. Mavis, did you know you've got spots all over your, uh, tummy? Ha <laughs> ha, giggled Mavis. Silly old Arthur, I'm trying on my new swimsuit. Do you like it? Very nice, I'm sure, said Arthur. I'm going to the seaside. I always go on a climbing holiday. Fancy. I go right to the top of that big beech tree. That is dull, dull, dull. Oh, I don't know. The food's good. Very tender leaves up there. And it's a nice view. Dull. Where are you going then? Asked Arthur. Oh, Italy, Spain, Hawaii, who knows? Goodbye, Arthur. I'll send you a card. Don't do anything I wouldn't do, said Arthur glumly. Tree climbing did perhaps seem a bit, well, dull. Climbing holidays was good enough for me, Dad, and they're good enough for me, said Arthur to himself. And then he met Car Wash tying up a parcel. What you got there, then, Car Wash? asked Arthur. The Moog, said Car Wash. Hello, Arthur, said the Moog. He always goes on a package holiday, explained Carwash. I shall post him somewhere exotic. I personally shall stay with a very dear friend in Catford. I'm going to climb a tree. A tree? How oh, very exciting. Soon after that, Arthur had the misfortune to run into evil Edna. Out of my way, caterpillar, cried the witch. I'm off on my holidays. Going somewhere nice? I'm going here, said Edna. That's the hotel. My window is marked with a cross. I'm going to lie on that beach there and cast a nasty, horrid spell. I shall make it rain on every one of you all day long. After that, I shall have a paddle in the sea. Hope your feet go rusty, called Arthur, but very quietly. I could go somewhere exciting too, if I wanted, said Arthur. Well, the next day, Arthur was having a little nap on a toadstool when... It wasn't a toadstool at all. It was a rocket manned by those intrepid explorers of space, the astronauts. Hey, asked Arthur. Where's this thing going? Oh, Mars. You're going to Mars for your holidays. Fancy. Mars. Now, no one could say that was dull. Mind if I join you? Then suddenly... <laughs> the astronauts had to return to Earth for rocket repairs, leaving Arthur rather up in the air. Appreciating the gravity of the situation, he also returned to Earth, landing on his head. Greetings, your gracious and noble majesty, Caterpillar Queen of the planet Mars, said Arthur. Quaw. And the beautiful queen said, 
Wake up, you. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a snoring caterpillar. I thought you'd gone to the seaside, Edna. Well, I came back, didn't I? Snapped Edna. My feet went rusty. Oh, dear, said Arthur. It was ever such a hot day in Doily Woods, which did not improve the temper of evil Edna one little bit. Pa! said the wicked witch. And pa again! Woe betide anyone who crosses my path today! Now, just about to cross her path was the poor old beast, who was feeling very uncomfortable in that long, hairy coat. Phew! How frightfully, frightfully hot one is! Out of my way, you hairy old toe rag! Snapped evil Edna. Steady on, old girl, said the beast. You made me what I am, you know. Once I used to be Prince Humbert the Handsome. Remember? Now, I suppose you couldn't uh, twiddle the old avials and turn me back into my original shape again, eh? Then one could return to Mummy, the Queen of the Palace, marry a beautiful princess, and one would live happily ever afterwards. Is there anything else one would like? Well, actually, yes. It's so frightfully hot being a hairy beast. I feel like an ice lolly. That's because you are one, and in your original shape, too! <laughs> Edna? That was a very wicked thing to do, said Mavis Cruet the fairy, who had seen all. Sucks boo to you, you overweight fairy person, said evil Edna, and departed, laughing. <laughs> Don't you worry, beast, dear. It will all come right in the end. And even if it doesn't, you are quite the handsomest ice lolly in the whole world. Mavis? said Arthur the Caterpillar. You got struck by the sun, girl. Have a bit of a lie down till you feel normal. But I am normal, Arthur. Oh, yes. Chatting to a nice lolly is quite, quite normal. Do it all the time myself. But it's no ordinary ice lolly, Arthur. It's the poor beast. And look, he's crying. He's not crying, Maeve. He's melting. Oh, my goodness, he must be changed back into the beast immediately. Where's my dear little magic wand? Well, our Mavis is not a tidy fairy, and it took over an hour to find that wand. Fair move on, Maeve. That old matey here is going fast. Here I am. Now, here goes. Nothing happened, so she tried again. Nothing. What you need, girl, is a really good wand. When's your birthday? Oh, Arthur, by then the poor beast will have melted right away. Well, just at that moment, straight back from their successful tour of the planet Venus came the astronauts. Yeah, you useless UFOs can be a bit of use for once. Now, what you've got to do is... It was one of Arthur's better ideas, but it was two hours before the astronauts returned. Hey, that's a beaut! Oh, from the Milky Way! Fancy! Well, Arthur tied the star onto a stick, handed it over to Mavis and said... Have a go with that girl. There's not much of the lolly left, Arthur, but I'll do my best. Oh, well done, Maeve. I expect he'll soon grow. I think he's rather sweet as he is, cooed Mavis.
One day, Mavis Cruet, that fat little fairy, was strolling through Doily Woods when she met a stranger. Oh, she said, for it was quite a strange sort of stranger. What? What are you? asked Mavis. I, lady, am a gnome. Now Mavis warmed to the gnome immediately. No one had ever called her a lady before. Well, gnomey dear, she said, I wouldn't go any further down that way if you want to stay being a gnome, because down there lurks evil Edna, the wicked witch, who could cast a nasty old spell on you and turn you into, well, almost anything. She wouldn't hurt me, said the gnome. Everyone loves us gnomes. We really are very nice, very nice indeed. Good morning, lady. Well, there's no telling some people, but Mavis told Arthur the Caterpillar. Arthur, you'll never guess. I've just met a real, live gnome. No such thing. There is so. He's just gone down there. Come on, I'll introduce you. Gnomes, his figments have the imagination. Now the gnome had just met a curious object. Good morning, it said. I am a camera which was a fib. It was really evil Edna. I am a camera looking for a handsome, handsome gnome whom I can photograph for the cover of the magazine Ideal Gnome. And I think I've found him. Now, sir, you would look really, really fantastic sitting down, pretending that you're fishing. <laughs> like this? asked the gnome. Oh, that is really, really excellent. Now, smile, please. <laughs> I shall turn every gnome in the world into stone and become rich, rich, rich. Everyone buys stone garden gnomes. A few minutes later, Mavis and Arthur found that poor gnome. Look, Arthur, there he is. And, oh, he's fishing. Fishing? Here? Whoever he is, he must be a right nutter. Cooey, Mr. Gnome. Here I am again, Mr. Gnome. Mr. Gnome? Hey, ask him if he's caught anything. Mr. Gnome! You, Mavis Crow, have been chatting up a garden ornament. Look. <laughs> Solid stone. I'm sure it's my poor gnome who called me Lady. Ha-ha! <laughs> you two are now employees of Edna's Garden Ornaments Limited. Now move that valuable piece of sculpture I've just made over to my place. Well, they tried, but that stone gnome was so heavy. Ouch! Take it off my foot, you clumsy... Take it off! Take it off! Oh, dear, but I'm afraid we can't. We're just not strong enough. We're only little, aren't we, Arthur? But I'll tell you what. You could change him into a real gnome, then ask him nicely to get off your foot. I'm sure he would. So that is what evil Edna had to do. She went... If I were you, mate, said Arthur, I'd scarp her. The gnome scarpered. I wonder if there's any demand for stone caterpillars or fairies as garden ornaments. <coughs> but they had scarpered too. One day, not long ago, Arthur the Caterpillar discovered Mavis Cruet being a bit depressed. There's going to be a big, big contest, <laughs> sobbed the fairy, to find the beauty queen of the universe. <laughs> and it's going to be held here. Oh, fancy. And what's wrong with that, Maeve? I wanted to enter as Miss Doily Woods, but I'm so fat and so Ugly. Fat and ugly? Oh, no, I wouldn't go as far as to say that. Oh, Arthur, how far would you go? 
Well, I'd go right over to here, Maeve, making quite sure I was out of range. Then I'd say, Mavis, you are not fat and ugly. Go on. You're plump and plain. <gasps> beast! 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 It was then that the doorbell rang. May I come in? asked the beautiful fairy. Who, who are you? I am the Avalon Fairy with magical beauty aids to make Madam even more beautiful. You're wasting your time. I'm so fat, so plump and plain. Nonsense, said the fairy from Avalon, keeping her fingers crossed. Then two hours later, after using the beauty aids... Gosh! I am beautiful! It's all in the mind, you know. The day of the contest dawned. And I am Miss Doily Woods! The woods were full of beautiful contestants from all over the universe. There was Miss Mars, Miss Jupiter... And Miss Doily Woods! Rubbish! It was Evil Edna, the Wicked Witch, wearing a yellow sash. I am Miss Doily Woods, whereas you, Mavis Cruitt, are to become Miss Murky Duck Pond. Whereupon she cast one of her wicked spells, <coughs> turning poor Mavis into... Oh, froggy! What chance could a humble frog have against the assembled beauties from all over the universe, such as the captivating Miss Mars or the unforgettable Miss Jupiter? And the devastating Miss Doily Woods! And there were hosts of others, not to mention the three judges, who all came from the planet Saturn. With them came stupendous Miss Saturn. Those judges from Saturn will be biased. It's a big fiddle. Well, the contest began, and when Miss Saturn stepped before the judges... Look at that! The hussy! And look at them! I knew it! Now she's making eyes at them! That settles it. Oh, look! Evil Edna's changed those poor judges into frogs, too. Oh, and one of them has something in his eye. And another. Oh, gosh, I do believe they're winking. And at me. The frog judges thought Mavis Cruet the most beautiful frog ever. And so Miss Murky Duck Pond became Beauty Queen of the Universe. I shall win next year. I shall turn the judges into nasty little television sets. One terrible morning, the peace of the woods was shattered by... And then a... Oh, well done, lads! <laughs> what was that terrible noise, Arthur? Asked Mavis Cruet, the fairy. That was the sound of me getting rich, cried Evil Edna, the Wicked Witch. I'm having my trees all chopped down. Then I shall sell the timber and become very rich. But they're such lovely woods, Edna. Oh, think again, Edna, said Arthur the Caterpillar. Think of the ecology. These trees are our homes. Where would you live? Monte Carlo. My mind's made up, Caterpillar. Trees are worth their weight in gold. No, they're not. But they could be trees made of gold. Now, this is where Edna had an idea. Vicious it was. What's vicious about changing oneself into a wishing well? Look, Arthur, a dear little well. I wonder if it's very deep. Splash! Splash! I must be at the deep end, Maeve. Hello? 
Hello, Arthur. That's odd. Distinctly odd. It knew my name. Then it must be a magic well. A wishing well. You must make a wish. Hmm, but there's nothing I want, really. There is so. You, Caterpillar, would wish to have the touch of King Midas. I would. OK, then. If it makes you any happier, that's what I wish. <laughs> hey, Mavis, who's this King what's his name? King Midas, Arthur. Everything the poor man touched turned into gold. Oh, fancy. Well, as it was lunchtime, Arthur departed to his favourite patch of nettles. The autumn's coming a bit sudden. Oh, well. <gasps> this is a nettle, nettle. <laughs> Remember me, Caterpillar. I made your wish come true. Now everything you touch turns to gold. And if you ever want to eat again, you must go and touch every tree in the wood. What, every one? And that is what that poor, hungry caterpillar had to do. Well, this is hard work and on an empty stomach. Oh, Arthur, whatever are you doing? When Mavis had heard all, she rushed off to that wishing well and said, Wishing well? You've been horrid. So I'm going to change you into a nice, ordinary old well. It's your old friend. Save me. Edna, it was you all the time. Save me. Then will you take that wicked spell off poor Arthur, change those vulgar gold trees back into wooden ones, and not chop any more of them down? Yes. Oh, poor Edna. She looks quite poorly. Maeve, she's not a well person. One day, Arthur the Caterpillar had one of his funny feelings come on. Oh, it's going to happen, Maeve, he said. I know it is. I'm going to become a moth. Oh, no, Arthur, not again, said Mavis Cruet the fairy. I expected something you ate. No, Mavis, this time it's for real. Well, if you are, it's lucky you've got that nice chrysalis already. Arthur had built himself a chrysalis months before, during another of his funny feelings, and there it stood, deep in Doily Woods, all ready for the great day, and quite, quite empty. Oh, I come up from Somerset, where the cider apples grow. Mavis, this is where our path divides. You go one way and stay being a fairy, whilst I go to my chrysalis and become a moth. Some day, who knows, we may meet again. Oh, Arthur, this is so sad. Well, Tata. I've come up from Somerset, where the cider apples. Hey, gnome, what are you doing in me chrysalis? This is no chrysalis, my dear. This is a gnome's home. It is a chrysalis, and I know because I built it. You're a squatter, that's what you are. Now, up it. No, I'm no squatter, my dear. I to pay you rent. Here. A bean? If I were you, said Mavis later, I would toss that silly little bean away, forget all about that chrysalis thing, and stay being my little friend, the caterpillar. Never. <laughs> A magic beanstalk. This way to the gnome's home, me dears. The gnome's home? They're all going to be chrysalis. Hey, you no good gnomes, get out of me chrysalis. Chrysalis, me dear, this is the home for homeless gnomes. It's about to become a gnomeless home. Now, up it. But the gnomes only made rude noises and pulled ugly faces. Just then, who should enter the wood 
but a regiment of toy soldiers. Ifrit, 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 Hunt, Hunt, you see. Gosh, said Mavis, you're all so handsome. What you lot doing in our woods? Maneuvers, sir. Hi. Well, I don't suppose you could maneuver some gnomes out of my property? No gnome could ever face the cold steel of the regiment, sir. Arthur told them all, and that fine regiment marched off to take the chrysalis. Live right, live right, live right, live right, live right, live right. About five minutes later, the sergeant major returned. The enemy is routed, sir. Oh, how wonderfully brave of you all. All in the course of duty, ma'am. Mavis, this is where our path divides. You go one way and... Oh, Arthur, please don't go through all that again, or I'll cry. So once again, Arthur made his way to the chrysalis. Oh, no! Hey, what are you toy soldiers doing in me chrysalis? Chrysalis, sir! These are barracks, sir. Troops for the use of. Oh, Arthur, why are you wearing that funny hat? I'm off to join the army, Maeve. It's the only way I can get into me chrysalis and become a moth. But he wasn't gone for long. They wouldn't have me, Maeve. Said I got flat feet. <laughs> It was just before Christmas, and everyone in Doily Woods was being frantically busy. Even at night, high above the beech trees. Look up there, Arthur, cried Mavis Crewe at the fairy to her friend the caterpillar. Why, said Arthur, it's the annual outing of the Witches' Institute, wicked old harpies. Oh, Arthur, they're just dear little old grannies off to draw their pensions and then to do their Christmas shopping. Harpies and Aridans. As Christmas drew nearer, everyone was full of goodwill. Well, nearly everyone. A Merry Christmas to all our readers, said the bookworm. A Merry Christmas, my dears, said the gnome. A Merry Christmas to all you handsome, handsome soldiers. A horrible, miserable Christmas to one and all, said evil Edna, the wicked witch. I don't expect she meant it. Yes, I did. Well, anyway, by Christmas Eve, everyone was so excited, especially when the astronauts returned from outer space with the good news. You have? I say they just seen a UFO, WWW. What's that, Arthur? An unidentified flying object with white whiskers. You don't mean... Yeah, and he's coming here. And who, may I ask, is this he person? Santa Claus, Edna, isn't it exciting? You must hang up your stocking. No overgrown gnome is going to see my stocking. If he shows up here, going ho, 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 I'll turn him into a red frog. A big red frog! That night, Mavis and Arthur were so excited, they just couldn't go to bed. Any moment now, Santa will arrive. What are you doing out on Christmas Eve night, Froggy? <coughs> Mavis, do you think that... If you late notice. Turned Santa Claus into a red frog. Oh, my goodness. Don't worry, Santa, dear. We shall think of something. Hey, you could try waving the old wand, Maeve. My little wand could never undo the magic of evil Edna, Arthur. Now, I wonder if... Arthur's idea was brilliant. We'll get old Edna to reverse her own spell without her knowing she's doing it. Are you all right in there, Froggy? <coughs> that box is a bit small. Hope he doesn't get 
Santa Claustrophobia. What's that, Arthur? It was a joke, Maeve. Aha! A Christmas box for me! Afraid not, Edna. Mavis and I was having a little argument. Mavis said it was impossible for you to change this box into Santa Claus. Whereas I, knowing how brilliant and clever you was, said you could. Oh, you astute little caterpillar, you. Of course I can. Watch this. Oh, dear Santa, do let us hear you say ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho! We seem to have two Santas, Maeve. Then it's lucky I've got two legs, Arthur. What's your legs got to do with it? I can hang up both my stockings! <laughs> 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 <laughs>